you know, and play cricket, love the people and the culture and the, the food, the atmosphere. It's just the the greatest place away from Australia. So I'm very lucky. I, you know, I know Australia is my home, but India is my second home. Well, look, I've got a very close friendship with the wonderful Sachin Tendulkar. Uh, we became friends over the you know number of games that we played against each other. Uh, we had battles where India won, battles where Australia won. There are so many places I have seen, but there are so many places that I've still yet to see. Taj Mahal, I had to do that. I've done that and I'm so glad I did it. Hello and welcome to Indulge. Today we have with us one of the fastest bowlers in the world and former Australian cricketer, Brett Lee. Hello, Brett Lee. How are you? Good, Hannah. How are you? Namaste. Namaste. Okay, India loves you. How do you react to the love you have been receiving from this land? Oh, look, it's an incredible place. So, 1994 when I first met there and had the opportunity to work with some amazing people and you know, and play cricket, love the people and the culture and the, the food, the atmosphere. It's just the the greatest place away from Australia. So I'm very lucky. I You know, I know Australia is my home, but India is my second home. Our team is in Australia gearing for Border Gavaskar series. Are you going to catch the match in the stadium? Yeah, look, I'm obviously uh, doing some work with uh, Fox Sports. So I'll be watching the four tests. So I'll be looking forward to seeing how the cricket goes. I know that India have got a good side. And I know that Australia trying to find their best 11, so it's going to be an exciting series. And who are you rooting from, from India? Oh, look, there are a lot of players that I, um, you know, are looking forward to, to watching play. First and foremost, it's Virat Kohli. You know, looking forward to seeing how he leads his men. He'll be heading home after the first test because, <laughs> excuse me, because of the, the birth of his um, his child. So, we have offered that he can stay in Australia and have a have an Australian-born baby, but uh, I think he might want to head home to India. Uh, but look, it's going to be a lot of fun, and you know, you, you know, you think of guys like Coley, you think of guys like um, Jasper Bumrah, um, Pujara. Those, those guys that did very well last time over here. After Dhoni, Virat Kohli is big hero in India. As a cricketer, how do you view both these cricketers on and off field? You know, at the end of the day, they're just normal guys. And that's that's the greatest thing about the Indian cricket team and also the Australian cricket team. They're just normal people. Um, I love the fact that uh, they are superstars in your country. They're superstars in our country. Mm-hmm. But one thing I do know is knowing them personally and having the, the pleasure to play against most of the people that are coming out to this tour is that mm-hmm. they're just very, very down to earth, normal guys. And to me, it's really exciting and it's it's refreshing too. Share with us some of your memories from on and off field with Indian cricketers. Well, look, I've got a very close friendship with the wonderful Sachin Tendulkar. Uh, we became friends over the you know number of games that we played against each other. Uh, we had battles where India won, battles where Australia won. So, you know, the most important thing about sport is that when you walk on the sporting field, you play 100%. You embrace the game, you enjoy the game. Off the field, though, that's where you should be able to, to make friendships. Because as I know now, being 44 years of age, cricket will not last forever. And I've retired from cricket, but I've still got the friendships. And to me, that's the most amazing memories that will definitely live on. And, you know, we've from going to different restaurants to going go-kart riding with Sachin Tanduka to 10-pin bowling with him. You know, he's just a wonderful guy. And apart from our shared love for cricket, what do you think India and Australia have in common? I reckon it's the fact that we we both love our families. We're very <clears throat> close to you know our parents and our you know our families and the way that the Indian culture look up to their parents and respect their elders. Uh, I'm I've been brought up that same way, so uh, maybe that's the reason why that I get on so well with the Indian culture is because you know I know that that's that's the way that I've been brought up. So. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of differences and there's, and there's a lot of similarities between India and Australian culture. And how has lockdown been for you? Did you get enough of family time? Lockdown was tough, to be honest, because, you know, when you spend, um, you know, a lot of time in a hotel room, it's, it's quite tough. And being away from your loved ones, I spent close to 
it must have been 80 days over in India. So that's a long time away from the family and the and your friends. But look, it's a it's a sacrifice that had to be made in order to to continue the work, but also to 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 try and stay safe and COVID free. And I'm glad that touch with that happened and everyone left the bubble, um, you know, better than when, when they were in there. And how are things in Australia with regards to COVID? Are you planning Look, to head out without, anytime soon? Yeah, yeah, we, we are back to normal. We are pretty much back to a normal mm-hmm. life in terms of there's there's no lockdown in, in place right now. As we speak, there's no um, trans transmissions that are made from person to person. Um, you know, I'm sure there are still COVID cases in hospitals, people covering from overseas that have come into Australia that have actually brought it in there. You know, they might be recovering in hospital, but there's no transmissions from person to person in the street, which is great news. And, you know, that's that's one thing I'm really proud about Australia. We had some really, really harsh lockdown laws, certainly down in Melbourne, but we're, we're back to normal business. And I don't think the world will ever be the same, even though that when I say we're back to normal, I can now walk in the street, I can sit in a cafe, I can go to uh, a restaurant, I can sit down there and relax and be around people, speak to people. We can have people over at our house. We can go go to work, come back to work. Uh, I think with sport, they're still going to bubble because if one person unfortunately falls ill, then the whole, the whole sporting event's cancelled. So... I get it for that reason, but we're we're back to normal, which is fantastic. I hope India can actually get back to some sort of normality soon. I really do. Since Australia is, you know, getting back to normal, I want to know what are your favorite hotspots in Australia that you would recommend to people in India once travel kickstarts? Well, once uh, international travel is allowed again, um, certainly from India coming to Australia, you know, we, we, we love Indian people coming to Australia to visit our shores. That's, that's one thing that we enjoy doing. Um, what I keep telling my Indian friends, not only here in Australia, but back home in India, is that India, uh, Australia rather, is such a, a beautiful place to discover, a safe place to discover. And certainly now that it's um, done so well with the COVID and, you know, get, getting through and, and actually we think that we're, we're at the stage now where we're, we're, where we're beating this pandemic, certainly here in Australia. Uh, come Firstly, you have to come to Sydney. Sydney's where I'm from. That's my hometown. You've got to see the Opera House. You've got to see the Harbour Bridge. You've got to go out on the Sydney Harbour, catch a ferry. There are so many great things. A, a great tourist attraction too for um, Indian culture is to – do a walk around or a tour of the Sydney cricket ground. I know a lot mm-hmm. of people find that fascinating. Um, you know, the Hello Turf, it's a beautiful place to, to visit. So, I mean, I could name 300 things to do in Australia. I've only mentioned a few because that's what springs to mind. Hmm. What are your favourite hotspots in India? The thing that I do realise about India is that normally when I go to uh, India, it's normally hotel or airport, hotel, cricket ground, hotel, cricket ground, airport, home. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have been on a few trip, uh, like a few trips though, where I've actually been to some beautiful places. You know, I've I've gone and seen different parts of Mumbai. Um, you know, I've got charities over there which I support. My music foundation, which is amazing, and go to see some little communities and play some music for the children. Uh, at St. Jude's Hospital, uh, getting down to Goa, walking on the beach, uh, you know, going up to uh, Amritsa. You know, when you know when you think about a place like Amritsa with a golden temple, I mean, it's such a, a beautiful place. It's a, a very historic place, a very um, – it's, it's a really good, nice feeling when you go there. And then right up north, you know, when you go up towards, um, you know, the border, you go right up up as high as you possibly can and play cricket up at, um, you know, those amazing places. Yeah, it's, there are so many places I have seen, but there are so many places that I've still yet to see. Taj Mahal, I had to do that. I've done that and I was so glad I did it. Since you mentioned music, I want to know about your band, Six and Out. Mm. What made you form it in the first place? And did lockdown give you time to go back to music? Yeah, well, lockdown did. There was plenty of times in India where I would, 
pick the guitar up and I'd play a few songs or try to write some new tunes. Uh, we, we formed the band back in 1998, I think it was. And we've been, you know, doing gigs ever since. We haven't done a gig now for about 12, 18 months, only because everyone's been so busy. But it was a cricket band. So it started with four New South Wales cricketers. So my brother, Shane Lee, uh, Gavin Robertson, who was an off-spinner for Australia, Brad McNamara, who was an all-rounder for New South Wales, Richard Chiqui, uh, C-H-E-E-Q-U-E-E is the spelling. Richard Chiqui was the first Australian Chinese background person to play for New South Wales. And so they had a a lead singer, lead guitarist, uh, a drummer, acoustic guitarist, and I thought, there's no bass player. And I had no idea about music. And I thought, you know what? I want to learn how to play the bass. I went and got the, I went and bought a bass guitar. And then next week we were doing a gig, which was quite scary. But I taught myself and we ended up doing about 250 shows around Australia. But, you know, you are often seen wearing Indian traditional attire, you know, garments. Mm. I want to know, do you have any favorite designers in India or do you have any particular stores that you offer shop from? Not, not really. No, um, look, there, there are some amazing designers in India and, and also here in Australia. But, you know, normally, and I have walked the, um, the catwalk. I've done the fashion week in India before where I've, I've worn a kutta and worn some of the traditional clothing, which is lovely. And it's nice sometimes, you know, I've got a couple of items here in my house that uh, I tend to, if there's an Indian, um, you know, a, uh, a traditional ceremony to go to here in Australia, then they like to dress up. And I think it's just the fact that you make an effort, people really appreciate that. How do you manage to look so young? What Me? is your fitness? <laughs> what, how, you know, what do you do? What is your fitness routine? Well, I try every morning to get up and, and do some weights, do, you know, do a gym session in the morning. It just clears your mind. It makes you feel as if that you can start the day and you almost feel like, you're one step ahead of the rest of the world. So if I'm up at 5.30 in the morning and I do my gym session, by 6.30, 7 o'clock, I'm finished. Some people might be getting out of bed and I'm like, I've already done my my workout. I feel great. I've got lots of energy. I have a coffee, have breakfast with the family and I'm ready to go. So that's what keeps me going. What is that one secret that you would like to share with budding ballers, fast ballers? One secret... I, th- I think the the error that a lot of fast bowlers, boys and girls, both make. So a traditional right hand bowler, the mistake that a lot of bowlers make is that they try to bowl really fast with their right arm, their dominant hand. So they're holding the cricket ball there, being right handed, and they bowl try to bowl super fast with their right arm. It's actually the left arm that gets all the pace. So the way that you can snap that left arm down. And the quicker this arm comes down, the quicker that arm follows. So people think to bowl fast, they have to muscle the ball. It's all that timing. So you get your left arm up and snap it down and you'll get a few kilometers quicker. Do you miss speaking in Hindi? And we know that you're very well versed with the language. So we want you to sign off our interview in Hindi. Uh, See, my Hindi is still tora tora. Um, I've got my... uh, Got my Tanda Pani. It's been a uh, a nice time chatting to you. Up some milky cushy hoy. Uh it's been a lot of fun. And yeah, as I said, it was great, really nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Same here. Thank you.